This is the Lenovo Legion 7i. It's the successor to the very popular Y740, which I reviewed last year, and I was amazed at the performance that Lenovo was able to offer in a 15-inch chassis. It was really just incredible, and the price was also justifiable too at the time before Ryzen entered the horizon. Now, the 7i series from Legion represents their highest performing gaming notebook series, and they have like a mid-tier level, which is the 5i series, and then the Legion 5, which offers AMD Ryzen processors. Uh, so what they've done with the 7i is they've tweaked a few things with the design, they've updated the hardware with Intel's 10 Gen uh, Core H series processors and RTX Super Max Q graphics, and they've also upgraded the cooling solution on this notebook. And I gotta admit, this thing, it loves to flex its muscles. So let's take a closer look at the 7i right after this. The Razer Viper Ultimate, the lightest and fastest wireless mouse designed for eSports with an accurate Focus Plus 20K DPI optical sensor, Razer Hyperspeed Wireless technology that is 25% faster than the competition, all packed into a lightweight body with optical mouse switches. Check it out below. Okay, so pricing for the 7i starts at 1530, and for that, you get a Core i5-10300H, 8 gigs of RAM, a 256GB NVMe drive, a 1660 Ti, and a 1080p IPS 144Hz display. The model that we have over here is specced out to the brim. So it comes with Intel's fastest Core i9-10980HK CPU with twice the number of threads, 32GB of RAM, two 1TB SSDs in RAID, an RTX 2080 Super Max Q GPU, and uh, the same display. Now, I wasn't able to find the exact price for this config since Lenovo doesn't offer the Core i9 option on their site at the time of making this video. However, I did find a model on BH Photo that was listed for less than $3,000, which is also unfortunately back ordered. So expect to pay over three grand for this config when it's available. With that being said, where does the 7i align with the rest of the competition? Well, there is the MSI GS66 Stealth, which is actually priced similarly to the 7i if you were to configure it spec to spec. Then we have the Razer Blade 15 Advanced, uh, the Arrow 15 from Gigabyte, uh, and we also have the Zephyrus S15 from ROG. Let's start with exterior impressions. And as I mentioned earlier, Legion has made a few tweaks here and there, but they still managed to keep it low profile. The Legion logo has been relocated from the top left-hand corner instead of the bottom on the Y740. Uh, they've also added a Lenovo badge on the other side, which is a nice touch. You'll also find the addition of ring lighting at the bottom, which looks absolutely amazing. I'm certainly getting concept vibes with the 7i. Uh, this isn't all aluminum build for the most part. There are some plastic bits here and there, but overall, I think it's built really well, though I would have preferred a unibody design considering the price point. The hinge is okay. It's not the strongest that I've come across. There is a bit of wobble and it opens 180 degrees flat, just like the GS66 Stealth. The interior space does look different from the Y740. They replaced the standard layout with a full-size keyboard and I have mixed feelings about this. You see, when I place my hands on top of the palm rest, uh, I really don't have a lot of space to work around, especially when I'm trying to use the WASD areas, particularly for gaming scenarios. I can easily sort of get over that edge. There's just not a lot of room. So I'd rather have a standard keyboard that looks just more cleaner and just simple. Uh, I mean, it's great news for gamers who are also accountants and love using numpads, but I really wanna know your thoughts about this. Would you rather prefer having a standard layout on a 15 inch notebook uh, or a full size keyboard? Let me know. The other thing I should mention is that you lose dedicated keys on the left-hand side, which used to give instant access to Vantage software, game capture, a few macro keys, and lighting adjustments. The keys themselves are fantastic. Lenovo has really nailed it on the 7i. Each keystroke feels stable and there's a good amount of travel distance. This thing is just perfect for gamers and typists. The cherry on top of that is the RGB lighting. Legion has partnered up with Corsair to deliver this beautiful lighting atmosphere. It's right on par with my Blade 15 Advance and I love it. Not to mention, Corsair's IQ software comes with a million lighting effects that you can play around with and you can customize them per zone or individual keys. Although I will say that the LED logo on the lid struggles to display accurate colors. For instance, when you choose white, it shows like a greenish tone. It's just something to keep in mind. The trackpad is decent. They've made it about 40% larger than the Y740. They did this by eliminating the dedicated primary left and right buttons. To be honest, I expected more from the 7i, like a glass surface, but that's not the case. It's a smooth plastic finish that gets a job done. It's pretty good. Uh, and it has support for Windows Precision drivers, but it just doesn't have that premium feel to it uh, compared to other notebooks that I've tested. 
Uh, now, listen, I'm a trackpad guy and this is a gaming laptop. And most of you, if you're using it for gaming, you most likely have an external mouse plugged in. But if you're just using it for other tasks, like say if you're you know, taking this to a coffee shop or somewhere else, you most likely wanna have a really nice experience using a good trackpad. And this just doesn't fall in line with those expensive gaming notebooks out there. So something that you should know. This is the webcam test on the 7i. Lenovo actually moved the camera from the bottom, the nose cam setup to the top, which is the more appropriate setting. And I mean, this is the perfect angle. What's really awesome is that they've also implemented a privacy shutter button, like a physical one right over here. So if I just block that, boom, you can't see my face which is awesome, but uh, yeah, really cool, thoughtful uh, features added to uh, the webcam here. And the microphone also sounds pretty good. I mean, it's not compressed, so it should be perfect for uh, Skype conversations or just business meetings. The speakers are located at the bottom and they sound okay. I mean, given the orientation, uh, expect a little bit of bass. There is some trouble and they do get loud. I'd say it's a little bit better than the GS66 Stealth from MSI, so that's welcoming. Port selection is well thought out on the 7i. Just like the Y740, the majority of them are located at the back, which just seems practical. So you get a Kensington lock, power in, couple of USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, gigabit ethernet, HDMI 2.0. On the right hand side, there's an extra USB 3.1 Gen 1 port. And on the left, you'll find a couple of Type-C ports, one of them being Thunderbolt 3 and the other being the standard Gen 2 port and an audio jack. Unfortunately, it does not have an SD card reader. Switching gears to the display, it's a 15.6 inch 1080p panel with a refresh rate of 144 Hertz and it's IPS and it's factory calibrated by X-Rite. Plus it's G-Sync ready, which is great. It passed our display analysis test with flying colors as it covers 100% sRGB, 76% Adobe RGB and 79% DCI-P3. So if you're looking to create content, this will not disappoint you. And the best part is the screen gets really bright. We're talking close to 400 nits, so outdoor visibility shouldn't be an issue. It's got great contrast ratio and viewing angles. The gaming experience on this thing is fantastic, guys. I have no complaints whatsoever. It's fast and there's a panel overdrive option in Vantage that tightens up the response time, which is awesome. All in all, this is by far the best looking screen that I've ever encountered on a gaming laptop. There's also a 240 Hertz option that you can opt for uh, when you're customizing the specs to your desire, which is nice. Legion is also carrying over their GPU MUX switch from previous generations, which allows you to either enable the discrete GPU full time or have the system enter a more typical hybrid mode that dynamically switches between the GPU and the iGPU based on workload. Both of these modes are taken over by NVIDIA's new Advanced Optimus, and the 7i is the first gaming notebook that we reviewed that used this feature. Before Advanced Optimus, people either needed to make a tough choice, either a gaming laptop with G-Sync or the power savings of Optimus. You couldn't have both since the IGP ended up controlling what was being displayed on screen, so G-Sync was impossible. Now it's the discrete GPU and NVIDIA software doing all the heavy lifting. So the switchable graphics and G-Sync can be featured on the same device like the 7i. Not only that, but you can switch between Optimus and full-time discrete mode uh, without having to reboot the system, which is nice. Under the hood, Lenovo has made it fairly easier to access components. The memory sticks are right over here with thermal padding on top. Maximum supported memory is 32 gigabytes, which I did find to be quite weird because my Blade 15 can support up to 64 gigabytes. The two NVMe drives are scattered across both sides and the drive speeds are insane, guys. Keep in mind that Lenovo did configure them in RAID 0, so the read-write performance are right in line with our expectations, but if you value redundancy, you can opt out of the RAID 0 option. They've also stepped up the cooling system. Legion is calling it Coldfront 2.0, so it comes with an integrated vapor chamber and an updated thermal sensor array. It also has a dual fan system of 73 liquid crystal polymer fan blades, that enhances four dedicated thermal channels to cycle air at top speeds. This certainly helps the CPU to achieve higher clock speeds without sacrificing temperatures. They've also upgraded the battery on the 7i, so now you're getting an 80 watt hour battery instead of a 57 watt hour battery on the Y740, and they did that by eliminating the two and a half inch hard drive bay. Now we performed our battery tests in balance mode, and it's honestly not that great. As you can see in our light load test, it only lasted for about six hours, which is respectable, but not as good as something like the GS66 Stealth or the Tough A15, which both have bigger batteries, of course. Part of this has to do with the higher TDP on that Core i9 CPU and a really fast GPU, unlike the efficient Ryzen processors. You'll also notice that we've added results with G-Sync enabled, and that certainly affects battery life, 
both during idle and heavy load scenarios. Okay, so now let's get into performance. Now, before I get into the synthetic results, uh, let's go over the CPU temperatures and frequencies over time and see how Lenovo was able to cool Intel's fastest power-hungry Core i9 processor. Well, in the highest performance mode, it starts out at 4 GHz, but then eventually it settles to an average of 3.7 GHz on all cores. That's actually pretty impressive given the temperatures settle around 83 degrees Celsius. Remember, the i9-10980HK has a maximum configurable TDP frequency of 3.1 GHz, so it almost feels like Legion has enough confidence in their cooling solution that they're operating the i9 at a slight overclock. So now we're aware of how the 7i performs in its highest performance mode, which seems to be the popular option among a lot of you when you have your devices plugged in. We obviously figured this out from a recent Twitter poll that we conducted. But there is more to that story, guys, because a lot of these devices do come with custom power plants. So with just a flip of a switch, it'll convert a laptop to a portable monster with the best performance or a more efficient setup where it boosts battery and gives you, you know, more quiet setting that's more efficient. Uh, we're planning on investing this, investigating uh, this custom power plant options in another video. So definitely stay tuned for that. But without any further ado, blah, but without any further ado, Let's dive into the benchmarks. Starting off with Cinebench, you will see the same theme carry throughout these tests. In multi-core, Intel's highest end CPU being used in a $3,000 laptop can barely keep up with a $1,200 device using a Ryzen 7 4800H. On the other hand, Intel still leads by a significant amount when it comes to lightly threaded applications. Another area where the Legion 7i really excels is when the RTX 2080 Super can flex its muscles like in Resolve Studio. Then Handbrake once again shows AMD's domination, while WinRAR benefits the ultra-fast RAID 0 NVMe SSD array. When it comes to gaming frequency, this is actually one of the first gaming notebooks we've come across that has super consistent results. It hits 4.4 GHz and just stays there for most of the test. Temperatures were a bit higher, but that's probably due to some heat soak from the GPU into the CPU's cooling array, but there's nothing to worry about here. The RTX 2080 Super Max-Q is one heck of a powerful graphics card to be crammed into such a thin notebook, but it looks like its heat is pretty well managed. Like all NVIDIA GPUs, part of the heat management is done through gradually modulating clock speeds up and down over time. In this case, it's moving from 1500 MHz to about 1700 MHz, both of which are well above NVIDIA's 1230 MHz boost spec, so it's obviously getting more than enough cooling. In games, that leads to absolute domination in every single title we threw at the 7i. This is by far the fastest gaming notebook we've ever come across, period. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's the fastest we're gonna see this year. It looks like Legion have been able to seamlessly combine a slim chassis with great cooling and high-end components to create a desktop class gaming experience. I mean, sure, you can build a faster desktop for less, but with component prices the way they are these days, this seems to be a pretty good option if you want some portability. The acoustic performance is pretty good. The notebook doesn't sound like a jet fan during gaming scenarios and during idle, it's very quiet. Although I will mention that uh, when you're in a completely silent environment, when you can't really hear anything in the background, you will start to hear some inductor noise coming from the chassis. I think I'm gonna play a clip right after this so you can actually listen to what I'm talking about. And to wrap things up, surface temperatures are really good on the 7i. Uh, there are not a lot of hot spots on the chassis and this is again, thanks to the amazing Cold Front 2.0 cooling technology that Legion was able to implement into this chassis. Great job, guys. All right, so I think it's time to wrap up my thoughts on the Legion 7i. I really like what they've done with the design. They've tweaked a few things compared to the Y740, but those are welcoming changes. I especially love the cool ring lighting at the bottom. It definitely gives you those concept vibes and you can turn it completely off if you wanna get that stealth, simple looking laptop. You can easily take this thing to a business meeting because it doesn't look like a gaming laptop, but it does when you turn on those RGB lights. Uh, the display is fantastic. It is, again, one of the best that we've encountered. It's bright, it's color accurate. The keyboard is fantastic. My only issue with it is the trackpad. I really wish that they improved upon that, but we could expect, or hopefully, they'll improve on that uh, with the next revision. The battery life is not that great. Unfortunately, that is something to expect, uh, given these specs, and of course, you've got a G-Sync display to work with. And um, finally, there is the performance. That is where this thing shines uh, because the numbers are off the charts. They do speak for themselves. You've got a really fast GPU, 
a fast CPU, not the fastest. I really wished if it had a Ryzen CPU, but unfortunately we're not getting that. And it also goes to show that Intel has a lot of catching up to do because Legion was just so confident in their cooling system that they applied a slight overclock, but it still couldn't keep up with the fastest that AMD has to offer. That definitely conveys a story. So if you're in the market looking for the fastest gaming notebook, um, I think the 7i should be on the top of your list. So on that note, thank you so much for watching uh, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, and spend responsibly as well.